Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, we have Zach here, who is not only the judge for uh, camping in the Amazon. Uh, you can check that out in the link in the description below. Uh, and also a uh, newly owner of a completely uh, built out trailer, uh, very similar to mine. And uh, so we're going to learn some more information about that today. How you doing? I'm I'm doing great and super happy, wonderful that you did not like you know, um, patent your trailer style because you know I would have been there would have been some definite copyright infringements on that bad boy. Um, um, and what was your experience uh, judging the uh, the contest? Um, it was really really great because I didn't have to do any of the building or anything. Um, I pretty much sat in the chair, had the dog next to me, and just watched you all do the work. Um, I felt very state foreman worker in that moment, and uh, it was it was really great. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Leaning on the shovel. I am a lineman for the county. Uh, and if you're interested in the results of his judgment on who did the best job with camping in the Amazon, go ahead and check that out in the link in the description below. And so, uh, what what made you what 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 made you start the project? Like, what was the so I was on a family camping trip. Uh, my family goes on a yearly camping trip. Um, and uh, my wife and I have been in a tent uh, for a few years now. And we walked past someone who had a teardrop trailer. And we looked heavily into those, into, into buying one, then into uh, possibly even making our own. Um, because they do sell kits um, that you can do that with. Um, and we we were going to look into doing that. And it was going to cost a good amount of money to do it. And then um, my brother-in-law uh, had a trailer that he uh, he said, hey, um, I know you were looking into doing a trailer conversion or something like that. And he said, um, I need to get this trailer out of my yard. Do you want it? And I said, what do you want it for? And he said, I want it for it to be out of my yard. Um, so I got that from him and started the trailer conversion into the camper that it is today. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I have taken a look at it. Uh, this is the podcast. So we're going to do a video as well. So go ahead and check that in the link to the description below if you want to check out the, uh, the, the trailer that he's done. Uh, what was the kind of the goal of the trailer? I know that like there's the best way when you build something like that is to kind of have a, a direction to go in. What was your kind of direction? Um, my direction was to uh, basically just have a moving bed. Um, I don't get the greatest night's sleep on air mattresses because of how they move and things like that. Um, and sleeping pads are too thin for me. Uh, so I usually end up waking up in the morning with some sort of a back creak or, you know, some sort of something that is just not great. Um, but yeah, so I, it was mostly just for a moving bed and then I'm just adding other things to it. Like I have the, uh, the table on the outside, the, the whole setup for the cooking, all that kind of stuff. And then I have lights set up on the inside. I even made a li nice little, um, reading lights. Uh, so that way, if at nighttime I want to sit in there and read, I don't have to have all the lights on. I can just have that one on. Uh, what was your budget for the project? I didn't really have a money budget. My money budget was how much I had in my bank account. Okay. Um, it was more of a time budget. I wanted to get done before this camping season um, just because I wanted to actually start utilizing it and using it because n nothing can beat a good night's sleep. What was your time budget and how... How did you manage it, and, and what was the time frame that you built the whole trailer in? Uh, time frame, I wanted to basically have it done for this uh, for this actual first trip, um, and I finished it just under the wire. I started in January, uh, right around January 1st, um, and I got finished last weekend. So from January to April, uh, the first weekend in April, um, it was every single one of my days off, plus I had a little vacation. I was supposed to do some other stuff that... Uh, I decided to finish the trailer instead. I talked earlier kind of about the, the design choices. Uh, I think one of the most interesting ones for me uh, is the outside and kind of how you incorporated, uh, you know, using the bed, using the space underneath the bed, and then kind of how you went around that. If you can kind of just walk us through what that what thought process is like and how you put it all together. Yeah, so for like the bed, I, I I was I had a couple of different ideas for the bed frame to how it wanted to come down. But essentially, um, I wanted I, the the idea of the bed frame was always going to be 
similar to what it is. Um, it was just deciding whether I was going to have space underneath or if I was just going to do something different. My original plan, which I veered away from, um, on the left and the right of the flaps when they come down, and if you look at the video, you can see uh, it's just empty space under there. Um, it was supposed to be storage areas that I was going to build for that area. Um, but then I decided if I don't put that storage there, I can just put things in buckets underneath the bed, and it's not like it's going to matter anyways uh, because it's going to be covered and I can't get to it unless I flip the things up. Um, I decided not to ha put that storage in there so that way I can still use it as like a hauling trailer to take stuff back and forth and do all that kind of stuff with. Um, so, yeah, the storage was... Uh, and, and the outside, what was your, like, what is it, what was your kind of concept for that? The outside, I had uh, a bunch of different plans. I decided to go with solar solar powered system. So I have on the roof, I have a flexible solar panel. Um, I have the vent that's on the top as well. Um, the actual outside, I wanted to uh, make a little bit stronger and get a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Um, so I actually did a uh, bed liner, sprayed bed liner around the outside. Uh, the walls, I did it mostly for texture um, because it was a used utility trailer um, and there was decals and all that kind of stuff on the side. So I kind of want to put a texture on there before painting over that again. So that way it kind of disguised it a little bit more, which it did, um, but not all the way. Um, and then uh, I repainted it white afterwards. Um, I have a... Um, I have a 20, uh, 20 pound, 20, 20, 20 pound? Is yeah. that what they're called? Yeah. I don't know if it's pounds or gallons. My brain doesn't work on that one. Hmm. Um, a, a 20 pound propane tank on the front on the tongue that goes right in through the flooring, comes out to the outsides. I actually have everything set up so it doesn't matter which side I park on. Um, I can set up on either side. Um, I even have clips on both sides on the top for my canopy that that comes out like an awning. Okay, and then uh, how do you what what do you have for the sides of your trailer? Like on, on the sides, insides, outsides, 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 outside sides. Yeah, uh, I have a uh, I have clips uh, um, trailer. I don't know what they're called, um, but it's for like the insides of like the trailer rails that you can hook up things so you can block off things from moving back and forth. I have that on the sides, and I have my table that has the clips that can clip right in there, right on the table, um, and that can clip in on either side. Uh, the hose is for the uh, the hose for the propane comes out, so I can hook up my um, my stove to it. Mm. And uh, yeah, there's mm. not a whole lot. I didn't do I didn't do a whole whole lot with the outside. I kept it very simple, uh, very easy, so that way if it's raining and I need to break down in the rain, I can do it quickly and efficiently without having to worry about getting everything wet. One of the really cool things about it is that it's multi-sided so that when you go to a campsite, you're not like beholden to whatever way that you need to park in order to utilize the site. You could just go anywhere and do, you know, any which way that you want. You could even, like I've had times where it's been nicer if I could unhook and then move the tongue to a different location. Mm -hmm. And then for your case, you could, you know, you could do yeah. those kind of things. So I really like that. Um, so how was your... Um, uh, last night's sleep. It was your first time sleeping in the tent. I mean, the tent in the camper. In the camper, yeah. It was my first time doing a long sleep. I've I slept in there for about twenty thirty minutes when I finished it in my driveway, uh, just to see how it felt. Um, but you don't really get a good gauge on a, on a full night's sleep out of a quick nap. Um, but no, the uh, it was it was a great night's sleep. I would dare say the best sleep I've ever gotten while camping. Um, hands wow. down, um, just because it is a, it's, it's a regular size, well, it's a regular style bed in there. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a memory foam mattress that's, oh, it's only three inches thick, but I got, I got the foam underneath it. So it adds some more, more hard support, which I like sleeping on a firm bed anyways. So that helps that way. And, uh, it was just, it was a really good night's sleep. Yeah. When I was building out mine, I really wanted to do like a regular bed to put on there. And ultimately I, it was just not working out in every which way I was doing it. So now I, I run a air mattress on a platform that, that folds down. So that helps out that, that, that works for me and my mm -hmm. system. So yeah. definitely, you can definitely tell around your system, the bed is, you know, that focal point and everything kind of works around it, which I love. Yeah. Um, and I, it and that, such, it's a, it's a, it's a smaller trailer, so it doesn't have a ton of space on the inside for stuff. Um, some, uh, some people, when I was doing it, they were talking like, Hey, you could almost use like the back door and put a shelf on the back door and use that as a table too, and just swing it around on the outside. And I, I thought about doing that and I thought about that for a time, but then I was like, then I have to figure out 
some uh, then I uh, then I have to figure out some sort of a way to keep everything out or keep the air in or something like that. So like if I have that kitchen area and it's out and open and it's cold out, then I have to reheat the inside again instead of just keeping it warm on the inside. Yeah. So then I'd have to have I'd have to sit there and run a heater while running my cooking and stuff like that. So that's why I wanted it all outside. That way, if I'm running a heater on the inside, I'm not wasting that heat. It's just all staying in there and being good. Because I thought a lot about um, the trailer with heat because I was worried about being too cold, uh, which t turns out is not the thing I needed to worry about for this trip. <laughs> um, considering that it's 90 yeah. degrees today and it's, you know, beginning of april <laughs> right and and yeah tell us a little bit more about the uh the heater uh, i understand it's a pretty unique uh, setup you got going on yes um i made an ammo can heater um i took an ammo can uh, i it, uh, in the video uh that you that that was taken you should be able to see it in the side because i opened up both doors um and it is i took an ammo can um i put two holes in the back for air for air flow um, and I put that and attached it to my wall and then the ends the, on the sides of it I put in two pipes that go up and around uh, one and a half inch pipes um, That go all the way through and then I sealed the area there. So the inside is all just flat uh, It's it's all just it's still a box um, and then on the inside I have a um, It's a mason jar uh, that I poked holes in and put in wicks and I use it as an oil lamp uh, an oil lantern um, and that heats those pipes and then I have a um, I have computer fans that are on the inside the backing of the pipes that blow the air through So it's recycling the air that's inside of the cabin But it's also heating that air as it's passing through because the flames are hitting the pipes Yeah, it's really interesting. We'll leave a, a link in the description below. Uh, also had your first time uh, cooking uh, last night. Yes. How was that experience? What was uh, some of the uh, things that you design that you like those kind of things. So I uh, on the side of the trailer I had designed a few things where when the hose comes out. It's actually in a um, I utilized a, a Cover for an external outlet uh, so that way I just clip that open and then there's the hose um, But I didn't make it fit perfectly uh, So I had to buy an extension that I twist to that and then it goes into the stove. Um, I was extremely uh, happy with how it how it all worked. Um, I had tested everything previously um, Just to make sure that there was no leaks in the system because you don't want propane leaking into your cabin area because it you know death and stuff like that We all want to stay alive um, But uh, I had tested that all out and knew that it was all good um, But this is the first time actually lighting something for a purpose uh, last time I did it. I only um, I only lit I, I, I tied up a uh, just a standard lantern up to the end of it and I burned off the fuel that was in the lines after I tested it the first time because I didn't want to even leave fuel in the lines while I was traveling mm. um, but yeah uh, I used it and it was it was great um, cooked uh, cooked some nice chili um, it was more like a it was more like a spaghettio uh, thickness mm. it wasn't quite chili but it wasn't quite soup <laughs> Um, but you know, it was delicious. Um, yeah. so it's still, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So everyone does this, but when they go in to build a project, uh, you had planned something or designed something some way and it ultimately ended up being completely different. I know for a heater for mine, I've done that, you know, four times now or whatever. Uh, what was some of the, the design changes that you had to make on the fly, uh, because something didn't work? Um, I, the the biggest design changes I made actually I had to make two iterations of that heater um, The first one I didn't quite do it just right I used the wrong size piping in it and it was it's still in my kit It's still in my living room. It's just sitting there right now. Um, I'm gonna use it for uh, to, to map out my dimensions for turning that uh, uh, Turning that heater almost into a cool air blower um, using the same technology just lining it with um, board insulation and then putting frozen like one liter bottles of water in there uh, to kind of cool it down and that should blow out some cool air for us um, But that was the mm -hmm. biggest thing and then the table Itself that I attached to the outside. I was originally going to do a, um, a butcher block um, And just have a whole have the whole thing being a butcher block um, But that was gonna run expensive 
um, especially because the um, the size butcher block I could get is way longer, so it's almost wasting it. Because and so you you've now finished the trailer. Yep. Uh, what are some of the things that you would do differently in the sense of like you know maybe I would want something like this or that. I mean, the it's still very fresh and brand new, so everything is still like I'm loving it. Like there's no I, like I don't have any problems with it. But the only thing that I would say I would want to do extra to it or anything differently um, would have been maybe my canopy, uh, having it going over the side a little bit, so that way it kind of covers the whole side. Because when I finally did the table, it matched perfectly on one side. But I forgot that when you are attaching it to the other side, it's not going left. The left isn't the end point anymore. Now the right is the end point. So the right end sticks out a little bit when I'm going from the passenger side uh... table setup. So I would have wanted to put an extra clip on the side. So that way, I mean, I have the tarp and everything to go over the side to cover it. Yeah. But just to have something there to clip it to easier yeah. than to having to just go into the ground, which isn't a problem. But sometimes you can get into some rocky terrain underneath that much of dirt um <laughs> so especially around here where everything's just you know like a slab of granite underneath um <laughs> uh, and and how is it towing um no problems um it's it's nice it is a very it's a small trailer and it's 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 a little thin too but it's also not so tall so the stabilization on it is really great a lot of the weights at the bottom so it keeps it stable um uh, I was a little concerned on the way in because of the width of the road. Um, but then I remembered that the trailer is exactly as wide as my mirrors. So if my mirrors can make it through, so can I. <laughs> nice. Nice. And uh, what will be your next trip? Um, I don't have... Uh, my next trip that I have planned isn't for a while. It's not until August with my uh, with my family. Um, but I'm hoping that uh, I'll find a couple days off from work and maybe maybe uh, request a couple days here and there and just go to a place for an overnight and just hang out. And it's just so much easier now because uh, camping setup and camping breakdown is just, you know, it's it takes it from those hours to, you know, just under an hour, you know, or fit like 20, 25 minutes, depending on how much stuff you're really going to be using that weekend. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it amazes me how much I like it because of how little I have to do when I start camping. Cause then my starting camping trip happens like so much sooner than just setting everything up and being all sweaty and, you know, like you guys were. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And uh, go ahead and check out that uh, video of his trailer and some of his commentary right down below. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Yeah. And remember, and if, uh, if my uh, system does end up leaking propane and I die in there, the person you're looking for is Ryan Latovsky. <laughs> um, I got all of my design things from him, so he's the one the cops are going to want to go to. <laughs> thank you.